Our next guest is Fred Harris. Uh, Fred, would you come on up? Experience, we got home, 
you taught, taught, taught. Well, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> then he would call me up. He would invite me to different occasions. He would introduce me to different people. And I'd be having such a hard time because I'm so straight-laced. You know, after coming from a street life and then being a teen challenge, and uh, you had to carry yourself a certain way, the assemblies of God, which wasn't of that. But, you know, they were just a whole, just, uh, just a whole different kind of way and experience that I had ever had, ever had before in my life. And then to deal with John was like the opposite. Bang! <laughs> So time would go by, he'd give me a call again, I'd go by his house, now he lives in another place. What <laughs> <laughs> the big house. <laughs> and of course, those of you that know his wife, Donna, she would be <laughs> so nice, you know, so nice and kind and whatnot. Then they had a daughter, Rachel, I won't say too much about her. <laughs> Rachel was around, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was out of work for a period of time, and I really needed a job. And I was talking with John, he talked all day. And he suggested to me a uh, place to check for a job. So I think we check it out, and I got the job. And, you know, through the years of knowing him, <coughs> selling cars, uh, <coughs> coming up with different deals, <coughs> uh, you need to go check this out, Fred. Check that out. And I'm wondering, wait a minute, how can you do that and still be saved? Well, look at you. This and still be saved. At least the picture I had of me. So, oh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You know, uh, oh, come down. Hey, I'm selling cars now, and we got a good deal. <laughs> then my children begin to like it. You know, my children are adults, you know, and they're 20, 25, and around. So, you know, we just love Pastor Dixon. <laughs> just sit there and look. My wife is the type that just observes things. You know, right? <laughs> Are you going over to Pastor Denson's house today? <laughs> well, anyway, this last visit, we lived in, uh, where is it? West Bloomfield, off Maple, Near Maple and Orchard Lake. Of course, thank you. Orchard Lake. And um, <coughs> we didn't live too far from where John did. So we had to go over and see him. Nice house and everything. On the hill. <laughs> you need a car? <laughs> <laughs> it runs good. <laughs> <laughs> Just fix that part there. That part there. It'll be all right. All right. <laughs> So then he says, well, <clears throat> you know, I'm 72, so I'm a couple of years older than John. And John would say, oh, you know, you got to get your cardiovascular working. <laughs> I go out and he jogs. He's a good jogger, you know. So I go out and I start jogging. We do maybe a couple of miles. He's doing seven miles. You know, he said, you know, preach the Lord to get straight for so, you know, I can do all things to Christ Jesus. <laughs> Slows me down, it just. I uh, said, so Now, tomorrow, I'm going to do a rough one. It takes me to some railroad tracks. Railroad tracks. I said, You got to do the tracks, you got to do the tracks. He's running down the tracks, we're running down the tracks, you know, with the uh, beans, you know, on the, on the tracks, you know. So I slip all in between the tracks. <laughs> You gotta push it, you gotta push it. When, when you get near the end of the, uh, the, the ball, you gotta really give it all in. Bring it up on the hill, bring it up on the hill. I got all kind of physical problems with shooting over, you know, all kind of stuff, you know, the back's bothering me, you know, all these different things. Come on, you gotta push it, you gotta push it. So we go through that. Then he comes to our church. this type of presentation. And they come to me after. Is he saved? <laughs> yeah, the brother, brothers are right. <laughs> but 
eventually they really learned how to become very fond of him. <laughs> this last meeting, I was invited to his house, moved again. <laughs> <laughs> this time we had to get Matt Quist, but not. <laughs> was it Water? Water for Water for Guilt. Water for Guilt. <laughs> water for guilt. <laughs> okay, so we finally get out there and Says, and next to him, we're this is pretty cool. There you go in there. You want the kids go in there? But this ain't on his property. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, praise the Lord. You know, so anyway, we're sitting there. This guy brings out some big wine glasses. We say, you're saying five people to the Holy Ghost, totally in tongues of the Holy Ghost, all the other kind of things. You don't drink. So, this is Jewish my own <laughs> since I was 12. <laughs> oh, I don't smoke, I don't do none of those things. I don't even go near none of those things. Here I am with this big fat <laughs> Fine. I have my wife, my daughter, her daughter and her son. And, <laughs> and we got the wine and my wife's looking at me like this. So, be sociable. My daughter, she's going <laughs> so anyway, we get through that experience. We finally, I got an opportunity to visit the brother when he was in the hospital with the brace on his neck. Sit back. I thought he'd be in traction and all that. He'd be sitting on the bed talking like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Dr. Maddox hit on it because, you know, through the years I never knew what church he'd be in. <laughs> I didn't know whether he'd be Catholic. I didn't know whether he'd be Episcopalian, Baptist, Daddy Grace. <laughs> Don't tell him what he'd be. But it seems as though he's really found uh, his niche. In his place, and I'm so happy for him and his family to see that he's in a place where he feels God has placed him and where he's being a blessing to others, and hopefully, he's being blessed himself. And uh, I just thank the Lord for my loving job. Amen. Amen.